Hi guys and gals. Today I'm going to go over 16.1. I'm going to try to see if it helps for you not to see my face and just listen to my voice. So that way I'm not distracting you from the notes. So let's see how that goes. So 16.1, we talk about the characteristics of primates. So that includes us. So manual dexterity, meaning we can actually move our digits, right? Our fingers, our toes. Um, so there's five digits on each hand and feet. Um, so five per, per foot, five per hand. Uh, occasionally you get more or less, but those are variations. Okay. Usually inherited, sometimes by accident. Uh, we have flat nails. There are uh, sensitive areas on the ends of each one of our digits for sensation or feeling. And of course, our first digit are opposable. So in our case, uh, the, our thumbs are opposable. Um, and in the case of the manual dexterity for primates, uh, that also could be their big toe. Um, so if you look at primates or monkeys in this case, or apes, uh, their thumbs and their big toes are kind of set apart from other digits, okay? Uh, it can actually be brought across the palm or foot so that it touches or nearly touches the other digits, okay? Uh, this actually allows primates to grasp an object with a really good grip, which allows for climbing. Okay. Uh, so then it comes to the primate senses. Uh, primates rely mostly on their vision. Uh, also, kind of sense of smell also. Um, so primates have what's called binocular vision that results in greater depth perception. Um, and so that actually allows us to see um, greater, greater distances, more movements. We have um, more overlapping of areas. So that leads to less blind spots. Okay, that also leads to what we can see in color. Uh, so we call that color vision. And of course, like I talked about, we still use our sense of smell, but it is decreased. Uh, and also our teeth are reduced in size, uh, usually unspecialized. Uh, we do have the basic canines uh, just because our primate ancestors used to have to rip raw meat. Um, but as the years go by, evolution is kind of went away from that, especially now that we cook our meat. Uh, and so our incisors, our canine teeth, are uh, getting gradually smaller. Okay. Uh, so locomotion, so the motion of the body, we actually have pretty, uh, primates have pretty flexible bodies, uh, limber shoulders and hips. Like I said, we used to um, walk a lot. And then um, at some point, our answer, ancestors became arboreal. So they were tree climbers. I'll talk about that in, in a few minutes. But um, all primates, except for humans, walk on all four limbs. So if you watch them walk in documentaries, they're actually walking on all fours. Uh, humans have evolved to walk on two legs, though. And we'll talk about that moving forward also. Uh, we Primates have fantastic brains. Uh, they have unique behaviors. Uh, so actually primates have quite large brains in relation to their body size. We know that primates can learn sign language. Uh, and then once you learn sign language, um, you can communicate with them. Okay. Um, we also have larger areas of our brain devoted to memory and coordination uh, of our arm and leg movement. Uh, primates are actually really good problem solvers. They can figure out problems. They can do math. Um, they can use tools. Uh, and so with that, we have well-developed social behaviors. So they have families and big groups of families that uh, support one another. Reproductive rate, unfortunately, unfortunately in primates, is pretty slow. So uh, primates have fewer offspring. Uh, usually a mother will have one or maybe two offspring. Um, and in that case, uh, we have longer gestational periods. So as you can see on the map here, uh, apes are in green and they're, humans are pretty much taking over the whole world and we're, imp we're impeding on the natural habitat of other apes. 
uh, other primates. And so you can see that uh, Homo sapiens or humans take up much of the land mass uh, and even overlaps with some of these primates. Uh, whereas, you know, if you look at the apes, we're, they're losing land uh, from deforestation, putting up cities and buildings, construction, roads, all that. Um, so, so every year their, their habitat is getting smaller and smaller, which is making them more and more endangered. Okay. Uh, so things that primates have, like I said, uh, are they are arboreal or tree dwelling. Okay, at one point in time, even our ancestors were arboreal or tree dwelling. They realize that if they uh, are in trees, they can get uh, a better, a higher uh, chance of living, and they can actually get higher up to see the predators. Okay, so keeping that in mind. Um, so there's also different primate groups that we have, terrestrial, strepsoherines, wet-nosed versus the haplorines, which are dry-nosed, okay? Uh, if you're looking in your book, you can see some of those different primate groups, okay? Um, and it talks about each one, wet-nosed versus dry-nosed. So strepsoherines, uh, here's a picture. It's, you might know them as the lemur, okay? Um, they are large, okay, um, largely diurnal. They have large eyes, large ears. Uh, they rely dominantly on smell and social interactions, okay. Uh, there's a small subgroup that are, that are uh, nocturnal of those. They, they live in Madagascar, okay. Uh, they leap vertically. That's what they're well known for. Um, and so then you can go to Safikas, Sofic also Indris, and AAs. AAs are nocturnal. Uh, they also live in Madagascar. Okay. Uh, they tap, bark, and listen. That's what they're, they're really known for. Okay. They, they're looking for grubs. They have a really long third finger that is good for getting into holes of trees and pulling out those grubs. Then we got our haplorines. This includes your tarsiers, monkeys, apes. The apes include gibbons, orangutans, gorillas, chimpanzees, and humans. So we're a haplorine. Um, they are also anthropoids, uh, which it means they're split into the new world monkeys and old world monkeys. Okay. Um, okay, so I move on with that. So anthropoids means split into two groups, new world versus old world. Uh, so the New World monkeys are about 60 species of arboreal monkeys. Remember, arboreal means tree dwelling. Uh, they inhabit that tropical forest of Mexico, Central America, South America. <clears throat> Remember, when the Europeans came, they found the New World, so they got termed New World versus Old World based on the Europeans' uh, exploration. Most are diurnal and live in social groups, uh, usually big groups, um, anywhere from 30 to 50 individuals, they are distinguished by their prehensile tails. So all these new world monkeys have uh, prehensile tails that function like a fifth limb. Uh, a lot of times it'll grasp onto tree branches. Sometimes it'll support the monkey's weight. Um, and that's what it's used for. Uh, if you've ever seen like a spider monkey, that would be a good, a good example. Now the old world monkeys, uh, they live throughout Asia and Africa. Remember, European Europeans, you know, came to the New World. So they were from what is called, they just called it the Old World, which is Africa and Asia. Uh, this group of monkeys is diurnal. Uh, so they are out during the day and the night. They live in social groups. Yet again, big social groups, 30 to 50 individual individuals. The noses tend to be narrower, but their bodies are a lot larger. They do not have tails. Um, some, some have tails, but they aren't grasping tails. They're just tails, uh, and some have no tails at all. Um, but most of the old world monkeys have opposable digits, so thumbs, big toes. Uh, old world monkeys would be apes, so that'd be like your lesser apes versus your greater apes, right? Uh, chimpanzees versus um, orangutans. 
Uh, so apes actually have longer arms than legs. They're barrel shaped. They have no tails and they have really flexible wrists. Uh, you probably know that, like I said, from like the orangutans or chimpanzees. They are extremely social. They have complex vocalizations, so very in-depth languages. Uh, they're classified into two subcategories, like I said before, lesser apes and the greater apes. Okay, so lesser apes include Asian gibbons, siamangs. Uh, they generally move from branch to branch, uh, hand over hand, uh, and uh, with a swinging motion, and that's called brachiation. The greater apes, of course, include orangutans, gorillas, chimpan chimpanzees, and even homo sapiens. We are considered a greater ape. Okay, so here's our ancestral primate, right? We had some sort of ancestor here amongst all of the, the lesser apes. Okay. So even strips of hearing had some sort of common ancestor with us at one time. Uh, then we branched off from them. And then the new world versus old world, lesser versus greater apes. And then, of course, at some point we branched off more recently from the greater apes, right, um, into what we now call as hominids. Uh, so if we look at the fossil, right, the fossil record, uh, we see primates start to begin starting at the beginning of the Eocene era. That's roughly 60 million years ago. That's actually in the whole time span of the Earth. That's actually pretty recently. So if you're thinking of the whole life of the Earth, the whole time span it took for the Earth to form to now, 60 million years ago really is not that long ago. Um, and so we know that based on fossil records, these lemur-like primates were widespread about 50 million years ago. So it took them about 10 million years to get widespread. And by the end of the Eocene, which is 30 to 35 million years ago, uh, the anthropoids, remember greater, the um, old world monkey versus new world monkeys divided uh, and spread out roughly 30 to 35 million years ago. Okay, at the end of the Eocene, we saw the appearance of what we now call monkeys. Uh, like I said, about 30 million years ago. Uh, and so they hypothesized that the New World monkeys evolved from an isolated group of ancestral anthropoids. Okay, that was just an educated guess. So in Africa and Asia, the anthropoids also continued to evolve, but since they were separated geographically, they evolved independently of each other. Okay. Okay, so then we get to uh, the hominids. And of course, in your book, you can see a human a hominid skeleton, human skeleton versus a chimpanzee skeleton. Please look at that. Uh, you can see the differences. Um, hominids, of course, are bipedal. Bipedal meaning we walk on two legs. Okay, there are definitely anatomical differences between the two. Uh, you can also see the timeline there in your book. Now, of course, with bipedalism, there is disadvantages as well as advantages. Uh, that meaning, that being said, right, uh, a disadvantage is we really cannot run fast. Uh, it puts greater strain on our hips and our back, okay? Uh, but some ad advantages is we can actually look over tall grass. At some point uh, when the environment changed, we could look over the tall, dry grass uh, on prairies and see over the grass for predators, okay? Also, that leaves more uh, flexibility because we can not only stand, but we can reach higher fruits, vegetables. Um, <clears throat> we can grasp higher because of us being bipedal. Okay. All right. So that's where we're going to leave off for today.